Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photography with Jason Boland. Today, I've got a bit of a fun one. I took my Nikon ZF down to the ice rink last week and uh, my son was playing in the Australian Junior Ice Hockey League, which is a tournament based around some of the best players in the country and uh, under 21. And I tell you, these, uh, I don't want to call them kids because they're men now, but uh, these young men really threw on the action. Now, I had my Z9 there and the ZF because I wanted to compare. Now, I know there's, it's, it's really hard. You can't really compare a Z9 to a ZF, but I just wanted to prove that you can shoot action with a ZF and it's not just a beautiful, pretty little camera. It's a functional pro retro, as I like to call it, and it blew me away. The one thing that i got to say, though, is the high ISO on this camera is quite simply astounding. As I like to say, Nikons can see in the dark like a cat full of carrots, and uh, the ZF is no different. So let's hook straight into some photos. I'll tell you some more about the camera and the way I test, and um, let's go. Well, tonight, I've got the Nikon ZF in a 70 to 200 2.8 and I'm at the hockey at the um, Australian Junior Ice Hockey League tournament and uh, I'm going to test this little baby out. Now as you know I like to put my cameras through what they wouldn't normally be expected to handle and I want to check out whether the ZF is a true pro retro and I think it is. Bottom line is it's got an amazing sensor and a um, XP7 um, processor and I suspect it's going to be a low light beast. So um, let's hook into it. I know it doesn't look like it should be doing action and it shouldn't. I should have my Z9 out but um, no better way to find out the capabilities of a camera than to make it, like I said, do what it shouldn't be doing. So I'll show you some photos at the end and I'm going to go and shoot some hockey. Cheers. Right, so let's hook into uh, this little shot here. Now, straight off the bat, the ZF, it can shoot action. There's absolutely no denying that. Um, like I said, I was shooting it alongside my Z9, and I wasn't sure what to expect, to tell you the truth, but from the second I pulled it up, the 3D was sticky, as sticky as a fly on Thanksgiving leftovers, I should say, and the other apparent thing was the high ISO capability. Now, Everyone knows I say that Nikons can see in the dark like a cat full of carrots and the ZF might be the cat full of the most carrots as far as I'm concerned. The This is 6400 ISO. Um, I'm not sure how much you can see there on your YouTube, um, but the blacks are black and I really don't see. I'm looking at a massive ESO monitor in front of me and there's not much noise. I wouldn't even call it noise to tell you the truth. So it's really blowing me away, this camera. It's a true pro retro that I could go out and shoot anything with. Um, you know, if my Z9s didn't turn up, I'd be more than happy to just shoot on the ZF. Uh, apart from anything else, again, it's a low light beast, an absolute dead set low light beast. And it can replace a lot of cameras. <laughs> I'll give you the tip. Now, the way that I shoot hockey is I like to be down in the corner next to the nets so that I can get the players skating super fast towards me. And these are some of the best uh, hockey players in the country. So they're pretty fast. And the ZF kept up with the whole lot. Absolutely. Now, um, I shot, again, 3D um, not quite as sticky as my Z9 and Z8, but at the same time, I had absolutely no problems getting used to it and following the action. You know, there is a little bit of blackout. You've got to get used to moving your camera um, and following through, not stopping. And, you know, then you've just got no problem getting that action. Now, I don't like to shoot from the benches, from the red line or the blue lines. I know a lot of people do, and it is pretty convenient because you do get to photograph the players and you're not shooting through nets or um, or glass. But I'd rather shoot through nets and glass and get shots like this from angles like this, and you'll see a few more <laughs> that I shoot like, like I do. 
And um, I don't think that if I had had the Z9 in my hands or the Z8 in my hands, that I would have been able to get any better than what I did on the ZF, to tell you the truth. Sure, I would have had faster frame rate, you know, 20 frames a second. Helps you get the the flex in the hockey stick, which all the all the players love. Um, shows their power. Um, you know, I mean, like, look at this. This is like full tilt, coming at me, on the move, getting out of the way. Um, the focus is stuck with the player. It hasn't shifted anywhere else. And that's the other important thing that I bring up all the time is you've got to use the focus delay, you know. I mean, this is probably set on four, three, but it can trick you out. Like a couple of times with Corey Creed when I was testing the Z9, I would pre-focus on the end of the ramp and then he'd pop in the frame and it wasn't picking up the focus. And I'm like, what is going on? And it was like because I had the delay on, right? So it wasn't um, flicking straight over to him. It was holding the line, which is what it was meant to do. So, again, you know, the ZF is absolutely no different to a Z9 and a Z8 and all the other Nikon cameras. All these functions are there for a reason, right? And it's up to you to learn to turn them on or off. You know, at the end of this, I go through um, the menu pretty extensively and I talk about the reasons why I use things. Um, I understand that, you know, it might be going too long and uh, you just came to look at the photos, but if you do need to get into the menu system, stick around. See, I mean, it, this doesn't look like a fast shot, but he's moving as fast as he can towards the net and, uh, you know, face off. Oh, that's Jack. Um, you know, look at the quality there. The blacks are black, you know. I really don't see any noise to even talk about. Now, the exposure here is 6,400 ISO, um, 1,000 at 2.8. Sometimes I'm at 800 at 2.8. I prefer to be at 1,000. I would love Australian hockey rinks to have enough light to shoot at 3,200 ISO, but that's just never going to happen, unfortunately. Um, you know, again, put this in here to show that, you know, I'm following the player behind and, the you know, the 3D focus is sticking 100% to where I'm pointing the camera at. And, you know, honestly, I'm, like, completely blown away. So, you know, this this little move here, everyone knows uh, if you've photographed hockey how fast and agile the players are and they're just on the move, on the on their edges the whole time. So even when it looks like they're not moving, they're actually moving a lot and the camera's moving around a lot to keep up with it. So um, I, I really like this series, actually. And um, again, you know, face detect, 3D, it stayed on Jack there as the, uh, as the other player is diving through the air. You know, typical hockey player there, missing tooth. Got to love that. And, um, you know, he's just completely midair. And enough frame rate, 10 frames a second. Got to love that. And, again, it's not moving over to the other player's face, although it's um, quite clear. It's stuck where I've intended the 3D focus point to stay. And um, it's sticky. And, I mean, again, the blacks are, like, there's no changes to these at all. I don't even know if I straightened them. Now, I always use the virtual horizon. There's something about it. I love seeing the green, and it um, it keeps me balanced too, I think. Now, again, 3D focus, having no problems. There is a little bit of blackout, um, and, you know, is it as easy as picking up a Z9 or a Z8 and shooting action? No, it's not. Um, but can you do it? The proof is right on the screen in front of me. Yes, you can. It's really quite amazing. I mean... Like I was saying, you have to move the camera with the action uh, to keep up with it. But it's after a couple of times, it's easy. You know what's going on. On the move there, same thing. And it's just like, you know, you can see like it's on the player in red there. It's staying on the player in red there, still on the player in red there. Uh, it's really good. It's the best 3D uh, focus except for the Z9 and Z8 out of all of the Z cameras that I've used and still on the move here. And, you know, that's a big change 
And it, it's, you know, we'll go through that little sequence again. Oh, where does it go? It starts from here. You know, look at that on the move. They're all on the move. And, you know, it hasn't skipped a beat. And, you know, this is a tricky, tricky one to pull into there. You know, it's 70 mil full frame. Uh, handles it no problem at all. There's there's a lot of shots of Jack, Ben. <laughs> um, this is the shots that I love, you know. Look at that ice coming off the blade there and Jack's just in full flight, you know. Love these shots. And Aram there in the mix of it, he's one of the most agile and fastest players in the country, Aram Ratchuk. So there you go. Um, I'll take you through these again. The ZF, it can shoot action. It can shoot news. You know, it just reminds me of the old news days that, you know, I, I started with the Nicomat uh, FT2 and then I went up to FMs and then ELs. And there's so much pedigree in this camera. Um, it's a nod to Nikon from a long, long way back, four decades, I reckon. So if you're interested in a pro retro, if you're interested in just a beautiful camera, if you're interested in a camera that can do anything, then the ZF is for you. And it's definitely for me. I've got the green one coming. And I tell you, again, I keep saying it, but here's, look at this sequence. How cool is that? Boom. So wrapping it up, ZF gets my uh, tick of approval. And give it a try, you know. Go to your camera store, pull out the ZF. You'll, the first thing you'll feel is the weight, you know, the magnesium body. It's absolutely sensational. Um, it's got good purchase. Everything's where you want it to be. The menu system is so familiar to any Nikon user and anyone who's not used Nikon before, same thing. Pick it up and away you go. Now, like I said, hang around. Uh, I've got a quick wrap-up from the rink and then we're going to go straight into the menu system. And that's a bit, that's a bit longer, but um, I wanted to put it in there because it's quite extensive and anyone that wants to feel like you're on the right path, all the information's there. And the reasons why I use certain settings are there as well. So um, anyway, enough waffle from me. Let's hook into it. Well, team, after last night with my little ZF, I'm a bit in love, actually. It's a combination of so many cameras that I've used over the years. D850, um, the Z6, the Z62, the Z8, and the Z9. It's got all little bits and pieces of it in there. And of course, takes back to EL and FMs and even Nikomats. Um, super solid. It's like got so much weight and purchase to it. It's fantastic and that's the um, body involved in that. I've got to say the low light capability or the, the high ISO capability, I should really say in, in this situation, has been absolutely amazing. Um, I got some great, 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 great action shots out of this. Was it a little bit trickier than normal? Yes, it was, um, but it's no different to Z6. Uh, Z62. It's um, so even got this gorgeous little black and white number on the back there, which you can just flick it over, and uh, you know you're back in the old ages, in the dark ages, I should say. So ZF, love it. Um, that's how much I love it. Uh, it's what can I say? Really, I mean, like it's probably the very first of its kind, as in a true pro retro camera. Um, maybe the fir very first. So. Um, so yeah, am I getting one? I've got one, <laughs> but I'll be getting a green one to go with the, with, with the way that I work. Um, got to say, I love it. Have a look at the shots and stay around because I am going to do a comprehensive menu, um, instruction in here and it applies to all your Z cameras. So there you go. Happy days. Don't forget, do the bell and, um, what is the other thing? Oh, subscribe. That always works. All right. Cheers. Right. So let's dive into the menu and um, I'll try and make it as quick as what I can, but uh, no promises because there's a lot to go through. Anyway, um, I'll tell you what my settings are 
and um, you know, just the good stuff and you know, all that sort of stuff. Right. So obviously reset photo shooting menu, that's um quite clear what that is. That's a reset completely. Now with the storage folder, what I do is I rename them and I use my initials, Jason Boland is in JB. And then I call the camera will be ZFA, as in the A body, the first one. And if I um, have a second camera or a third camera, that B and C. Now, file naming, same thing. Um, so this will be uh, ZFA. And the reason why I do that is because if you're shooting multiple cameras, then you're able to identify which camera you've shot it on. So the reason for doing that is you know if you've had an issue with a card which i don't because i use hoodman absolutely brilliant cards but um you could have another issue you know you might have dropped your camera or you know you've got you've just got any problem whatsoever and you're able to identify which camera it is also what's helpful for doing that is if you've um shot multiple cameras and you've downloaded them and you are looking for something you know where it is like for example when i shot the hockey i was shooting a z9 and this and i wanted to just use the images from the zf so i could show you the photos here in my youtube video so i was able to just isolate them all with um file name right so primary slot is sd card for me um you know you can have whatever you want you know you've got a micro in there as well it's up to you what you shoot try and use the fastest cards you can can get or more precisely can afford because um you know the speed of the cards do make a big difference to all these cameras and i'll get to that further down the track secondary slot um i only do overflow um the reason for that is again i use hoodman cards and i've never had an issue with a card and i would rather not miss an image by getting to the end of one card if that makes any sense image area you know that's uh, that's clear i always set the dx crop alert um so i know you know it flashes up in the top corner um the tone mode now this is um this is standard tones now for hlg um you have to have a monitor which will allow that uh for you to use so you know you just go into the manual and it'll fill you in on on where to go there image quality raw always shoot raw there's another guy that says that too um look if you're not shooting raw you're crazy you know i shoot manual as well if you don't shoot manual you're a little bit crazy i know some people like to shoot auto but you know you've got these amazing evfs and you know you see all the changes live in front of you so oh, i don't see any point in um in shooting anything but raw um you know you've you've just got so much latitude to make any changes and fix it up later um now this is new and now i've got the heif files and uh it starts off with a fine star and a fine normal star normal basic star basic so we'll just press on the little question mark at the top so raw and jpeg heif fine and normal basic star Two pictures are recorded each time the shutter is released, one in RAW format and the other in JPEG or HEIF RAW. The output from the camera image sensor is recorded in RAW format using the options selected for RAW recording. I mean, this is new. As I was saying, you know, this camera goes back to pedigree 40 years ago, um, you know, from pretty much like a Nikomat FT2, EL, FM2s, um, D850, D90 as well, I guess. Uh, Z6, Z62, Z, uh, Z8, Z9. I mean, there's a lot of history in this camera, like a hell of a lot. It's quite amazing. So you know, you've got all your all your um, RAW and JPEG settings and HEIF settings. Um, you know, pick what's best for you. As long as you're shooting RAW at some stage, then you know. That's uh, that's the best thing. Um, image size, you've got all your different sizes here. I'll just quickly take you through them. Um, enable DX sizes. I haven't seen that. That's pretty cool. Enable DX size. Oh my gosh, that is really cool. So um, I would keep it on the large, but 
you've got these options. That is absolutely brilliant. I didn't find that the other day. Um, raw recording is on. I shoot uh, high efficiency. Again, something borrowed from the Z9 and Z8, um, or implemented, I should say. Amazing, this camera. Oh, it's really showing us what's going to be in the future for the prosumers. And, you know, as you know, I call this a uh, pro retro because it really is. The ISO settings, I don't shoot auto ISO, never have, never will. I know people that do, um, especially if you're shooting video, I guess, when you want to keep the the uh, recording the same, you know, especially the, the aperture. Um, but, yeah, I just... You know, again, I shoot everything. I set everything manually. White balance. Um, I do like to choose the color temperature, especially when I'm at work, or you know, you're at um, you know, somewhere like a concert or you know, hockey match where the where the light you want to keep it, you know, fairly neutral and real to life. So um, whenever you can, choose to set the Kelvin. Um, presets, you've got all the presets for uh, for your Kelvin there as well. Set picture control. Now, I do make changes, and I only do it to SD, to standard. Now, a reason why I do that is because I can see what's on the screen the way I want it to be. Um, obviously, if you open it in Photoshop through RAW, you lose those settings. So... You know, camera raw is a is a different kettle of fish, and it's not always accurate. Whereas if you're shooting through um, Nikon View Studio, then it is going to be accurate for you. Uh, you're going to get exactly what your camera says. All you have to do there is convert it to a TIFF or um, a JPEG, and then open it in you know Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, whatever you're using. Capture Twenty Three. Do they have Capture Twenty Three yet? Capture Twenty Two. Anyway, um, so, you know, you've got the neutral, all these, flat monochrome. Oh, that's the beauty about this too. On the back where we normally change things from video to stills, it's got a black and white button, and it's right next to the um, shutter dial, and it's really, it's really, really cool, actually. I like it a lot. Um, you know, you've got portraits, and, you know, you can change its sharpening, and, um, you know, just... All this stuff in this camera, you know, is all new. Not all new, but there's a lot of new. Look at all this stuff. Sunday. It's like having Nick filters inside your camera here. Uh, look at that. Just straight in there. And you can make all these beautiful changes to the file as we go. Um, manage picture control. You can save it and you can edit what you've already done. Um, it's not a bad idea to save your settings, actually, especially when you update firmware. Sometimes it can reset your settings. And also a reminder, too, that you can't always uh, reuse those settings on different firmware because there's different functions available uh, under different submenus. So, you know, you just have to take that by ear, I guess. Um, color space, always shoot sRGB. That's the closest to print that you'll get. Active delighting. Now, all this stuff here that we're going to go through, I turn it off. Now, the reason why I turn it off is in the past, it's always been a little bit of a turbocharging for the camera of, of uh, belt, especially with when you had 12 or 14 bit. The 14 bit would slow down the focus uh, and the 12 bit would speed everything up. I start with everything off. I would suggest you start with everything off as well and turn them on as you need them and test them out for what they need, you know. Um, high ISO noise reduction, turn that off. You know, you can do that later or you can put it on. But, you know, test these things first. Don't just go, oh, yeah, I need that. I'll better, better um, press that on because there's a good chance that you don't need it because these cameras, they, you know, the Nikons come out of the box just ready to rock. There's absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. Um, flicker reduction, that's really helpful when you're using LEDs and especially the cheap LEDs and stuff like that. You can, um, there's so much more in the menu these days. Oh my gosh, it takes forever. Um, but it's where everything is that you're used to. That's the beauty of Nikon. It's 
you know, you can go back to the very first DSLRs and the menu system's not much different. It's just got so many more items now. You know, flash control, I don't have uh, a flash, so it's not going to give me that um, that option. Flash mode, I have flash off. When I was trying to tether my camera, uh, my Z8, a couple of weeks ago, I had the flash turned off and I was shooting with strobe and it wouldn't fire. And then we turned the flash on in the camera and it worked. So I don't know whether it was just my camera or whether it's everyone's, really can't tell you. Flash compensation, that's great. You know, if you're a flash person, you can just, I would suggest, you know, just giving it an extra third of a stop just so that it gives your subject a little bit of a ping. Um, release mode, I'm on uh, continuous high. You know, you've got the C30, um, that's in the JPEG. You know, it's all this stuff that is in this beautiful little pro retro body that has come from all the legendary Nikons. It's so cool. Self-timer, that's really helpful. Obviously, when you you know doing selfies, resting it on a rock or putting it on a tripod or a, you know platypod or something like that, you can set it to go off uh, as many frames as you want, pretty much, and uh, and the time in between. So you know you just don't miss anything. Focus mode, AFC, AFS, and manual. Now I keep them. You know I want all of them, obviously. And with manual, I use peaking, focus peaking all the time. That is an absolute dream. Um, right, what do we got here? So we've got, I always shoot 3D tracking pretty much. Got auto area AF, um, pinpoint, single AF. I don't have a lens on, so um, some of the functions aren't coming up here. Dynamic area, small, medium, and large. Um, wide area, the subject detection, obviously auto, people, animal, vehicle, aeroplanes. Like, who doesn't want to photograph aeroplanes? Um, subject detection off. Now, this is a really important thing. People sit there and they go, right, now it's got one, two, three, four, five options for focus, but they forget that number six, subject detection off, is also an option, and there's many options that you want to turn it off. Like if you're in super, super uh, low contrast, low light, and you're trying to use um, people, you know, an eye focus, it can be a little bit tricky for any camera. Uh, turn it off and it will be able to lock onto a bigger area. So you don't want to confuse your camera. The camera will do as it is told. Uh, you're the boss. Make sure you let it know what to do. Um, manual focus uh, detection is off for here, but you know, you've got the wide, large, and all areas. Um, vibration reduction is off because I don't have a lens on, um, but I nearly always use that. Uh, it's, you know, who doesn't want to be able to handhold a camera at a third of a second, right? Um, link VR to focus point. That's absolutely legendary. Vibration reduction is adjusted to minimize the effects of vibration at the selected focus point. That is really, really worth having turned on. So I'm going to turn that back on. Auto bracketing, that's just about getting exposure either side of what you think the exposure is. Um, on, on a film set, uh, the visual effects crew, they use this all the time and they go from like 10 stops um, underexposed to 10 stops overexposed. And that is so that they can do HDR later you know that's the sort of thing you would use it for as well we've got multiple exposure that is uh that works you've got to keep it really still it's a bit hard to use when you're hand holding it's best when it's on a tripod or the camera's locked off hdr overlay now i only used this for the first time a few weeks ago and i have to say it was really really helpful and i'm definitely going to and i'm definitely going to continue to use that Interval timer shooting. Now, interval timer shooting, um, a lot of people obviously use it for star trails and, you know, things like that. But I know a lot of guys in my industry that will mount a camera, turn the interval timer shooting on, and 
walk away and use it for capturing action. So you could do that if you've, you know, you've got it waiting for an animal to turn up or, you know, you've got frequent times and things coming or, you know, you just can't be there, you can't be close, you can't get a remote in there to fire things off. So, you know, that's super, super helpful. Time-lapse video, we all know what that is. That's great. All these beautiful long time lapses of a whole day, turning it into literally a few minutes. Focus shift shooting, that's what you use if you want to be able to get the focus sharp from the foreground through to the background. And, you know, especially if you're photographing macro of, you know, jewelry or, you know, anything like that, really. Um, pixel shift shooting, that's new too. That's, um, oh, it's not available, obviously, because I don't have anything on. But um, let's have a look up here. The camera automatically takes the number of shots selected for number of shots. The resulting raw photos can be combined on a computer to create a high resolution picture, mount the camera on a tripod or otherwise fix in place before shooting. So that's like the gigapixel images that you see of like Mount Everest and stuff like that, you know, they're absolutely amazing. Now the video settings. Now I had a client a month ago that gave me a setting to set the video on because like, what do you want it on? How high? And then after we did it, the images were so good. It was that well, the video was so good. It was crazy stuff of lightning effects. And they were like, we want to do a screen cap. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you've got to be kidding me because I didn't shoot it at high enough res. So, you know, try and if you can shoot as high a file size as you can when you're shooting video, you don't want to be caught out. I had to take it to Topaz, which did a magnificent job of up resing, actually. Same thing with the folders, um, you know, change them to your initials and the camera body name and an initial, you know, a letter afterwards so you know which body it is. Same, you know, this is much of this is the same as just the stills um, options. I don't shoot a lot of video. So you people out there that are shooting lots more video than me, you know what settings that you want to have. But, you know, it's got pretty much everything the same that you do for um, still settings. So electronic VR, that's cool. And you know your mic settings, mic jack, plug-in power, sweet. Turn that off. Uh, headphone volume, all the usual stuff. Now let's dive in even deeper. Right, so we have A is for focus, B is for metering and exposure, C is for timers and uh, auto exposure locking, D is for shooting and display, E is for bracketing and flash, um, F is uh, for controls, and G is for video. So again, reset custom settings. I'm not going to do that because I've done some settings. Focus, right, so AFC, I've got it set to focus and release, but a lot lately with my Z9 because I'm shooting 10 to 20 frames a second a lot, um, I do have it set to focus now. Um, AFS, set to focus. Focus tracking lock on. Now, this is one of the most important things that you're going to use, especially for action. Now, what it means is, right, if we're, well, I'll read it out. Choose how long the camera waits before adjusting focus when an object comes between camera and subject. Options range from one quick to five delayed. So what that means, if, for example, you're shooting hockey and you're focusing on um, a player that is streaming towards you down the uh, down the rink, then if someone goes in front of them, if you've got it set to one, it will flick to them. The flick focus straight to them. If you've got it set to five or three or four, then it will delay that. So um, it will retain focus on the original subject. And I love that. It blows me away how it does it. Now, three is I never really go any slower than, well, I should say, I never really go any faster than three, which is down here. 
I usually stay at three and go to four or five. All right, focus points used. I like to use all focus points because I do not want to have a point where I can't move it to, you know, it might be on an eye or something like that and it'll be like either side. You know, with the 3D, it's not really an issue, but, you know, I, I do recommend using all points. It's just, you know, the focus is the most important thing next to exposure on a camera, isn't it? So, you know, you want to have all the options to nail it. Right, store focus points by orientation. So I leave that off, but let's have a look. So choose separate focus points and or AF modes for vertical and horizontal orientations. That's really good if you're someone who turns the camera sideways a lot. I actually don't. Um, I keep it landscape. I don't go into portrait mode very often unless I see an image, which I know is going to be a poster. So, um, you know, my settings aren't for everyone. You're going to have to make your own mind up, but it's a good spot to start. I've got to be honest there. And then you can make your own changes, you know. But like I said, turn a few things off and, you know, AF activation that uh, choose which controls can be used to focus the camera. Um, you know, that's like back button and on the main shutter. Perfect, perfect. Most of this stuff you've already got in your in your current Nikon, unless you're new to Nikon and you started with a ZF. Oh, that would be so glorious. 10 points to you. Leave me a comment down below if you have, actually. That would be very cool. Now, focus point persistence. This is actually pretty cool because it will remember your last focus point, so to speak. And, you know, um, I don't use it because I like to keep it in the middle. So I'm treating my camera like a, like a sight. Uh, or, you know, like a binocular with a sight, I guess, or whatever. So I will pull the camera up and I know that I'm pointing right at the center and I can start shooting as quick as possible. If you've got your focus point set over to the left or the right when you start up or top or bottom, you might miss something, especially when you're on 3D. All you got to do is point it at the chest. And uh, if you've got um, face detect on or people detect, it's going to find the eye and it doesn't matter where that focus point is, it will find it on that subject. That's a really, really good option to be using. Uh, limit the AF mode selection. I actually have them all set because I never know what I want to use. And, you know, like I said, that one there, 3D, that's my fave of all time. Now, focus wraparound. Now, this is something which I use all the time. Now, the reason why I do is because I move so quick and if I get to the end and I'm still pushing and it's not moving, it frustrates <laughs> frustrates me like crazy. But I find it quicker to go from one side around to the other or press the middle of the cursor and it will go straight back to the center. Now, let me see if I can um, show you that. So see the the red focus point there, right? So if I get to the end here, it comes around to the other side. Same thing if I go up, comes back there. Now, if I press in the middle, there it is. So over here, and it's like, I want to come back to the middle, just press the cursor, and away you go. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, focus point display is, you know, manual focus, dynamic area, um, AF assist. AFC in focus display, I have all of that, and the 3D tracking color, I have it set to red, but you can have it set to white. I find there's more white things in the world than red, so that's why I have it on red, so that I can clearly see where my uh, focus point is. Um, Built-in AF assist illuminator, I turn that off because I work on film sets and I can't have anything shining around. Focus peaking, oh, Focus peaking is the best, honestly. Um, I have it turned off on auto modes, but on manual, I have it on all the time. And there's a few tricks with this, a few tricks for using it, I should say. Now, there's no shortcut, so you're going to have to figure that out yourself. But, uh, but yes, focus peaking is uh, an amazing option for manual focus, 100%.
and I have it set to high sensitivity because I want to see everything that's going to be sharp. But if you want to see just the pure main areas that are sharp, then set it to low. And that's probably, I might try that out a little bit more actually. Focus peaking color, I have it set to red. Make it clear. Um, you know, you've got the other options there, but red for me seems to be the, the ticket. Focus point selection speed. Well, I have it set on normal, but Obviously, you can set it to high and low, and that will just change how fast the focus point moves. Right into the B menu for metering and exposure. So there you go, ISO sensitivity step values. I have it a third of a stop. I like to have my um, exposure like super accurate. So, you know, the other option is a full stop, um, which that's really, you know, it's not all that helpful. Um, there's lots of reasons to use it, but for me, um, I, I'm, I'm always set on a third for everything for, you know, shutter speeds, aperture, even on the ZF, I have them set to a third. Easy exposure compensation. Well, I have that set on. Let's have a look. Choose on or on auto to adjust exposure compensator without using the exposure compensation button. If on auto reset is selected, only changes to exposure compensation made using easy exposure compensation will be reset when the camera is turned off or the standby timer expires. I used to use the uh, exposure compensation a lot. And a lot of people, I find, um, I think it's very helpful for them. Basically what it means is if you want to add light, you do plus. If you want to take light away, then you do minus. So you'd use this on the beach or the snow or anywhere with, you know, bright, super bright areas or super dark areas um, in the background. And you want it just so that it's uh, going for your subject. Now, the matrix metering down here, um, face detect, I have that on uh, for matrix when I and if I ever use it now you want 90% of the time you want the face to be correctly exposed so that's why I do that if you're using auto metering modes then that's probably the one to have it set to All right so the center weighted area now you got standard or small and average I have it set to standard um, small isn't such a bad idea and neither is average. You know, again, it depends on what you're photographing. You've got to figure it out with your photographing sports or concerts or portraits, that sort of thing. Like I said, I'm not a massive auto exposure person. So look, again, I'll keep saying it. You're going to learn more about light if you shoot manual than auto. One day shooting manual is like probably a year of shooting auto exposure. You're going to see all the advantages in that one day of using manual. Um, you're going to see what the light does. You know, there's lots of high contrast and low contrast light, which can trick the cameras. Um, you know, not by much. You can fix it if you shot raw. But I'd rather just look through the viewfinder. You know, I've got really good eyes and you have too. Just get the exposure right, you know. It's... It's really not that difficult. So shoot manual, shoot manual. Right, so fine-tune optimal exposure. Um, that's pretty cool too, actually. If you if you know a situation that you're shooting in all the time, you can, um, you know, make those adjustments. Shutter release button on the back, you can do that. Not a problem whatsoever. That's pretty cool. Um, Self-timer, you know, you've got all the options here. Two seconds if you're just doing like a landscape, probably five seconds as well if you need the camera to stabilise, 10 seconds if you're going to run in front of it and 20 seconds if you've got to run a little bit further away for your selfie. So there you go. Power off delay. Now, I've got these all set to the highest at the moment because I'm doing the video, um, especially the standby timer. I've been caught out a few times without, uh, <laughs> without having that set to infinity. But, you know change it back to something more realistic, like, you know, a minute. Same with everything else. Um, playback, you'd probably have it 10 or 20 seconds. Menus, uh, you'd have the same 10 or 20 seconds. 
picture of you, same thing, 20 seconds probably. You know, whatever really works for you. Right, so down into the D menu, shooting display. So for here, when I'm shooting continuous low, I have it still set at max, which is, you know, crazy, but just call me crazy because I am a little bit. <laughs> and then maximum shots per burst, 200. I always have that set on, on max. Um, the reason being is you don't, you know, if you don't need to fill up your buffer, then why create a false buffer on its own? Pre-release capture um, options. So this is available in the JPEG. And again, another thing from the Z9 and the Z8, it will pre-record. So you've got the camera up to your eye and it will be shooting off frames I think it's probably three seconds the same as the others, but that means that when you shoot, when you actually press the button, when you see that action, it's actually already recorded three seconds before that. So there's not much excuse for missing anything there, especially if you're photographing your kid's sport and you're shooting it in JPEG. Well, then, absolutely brilliant. Sync release. Um, well, I don't sync the cameras up, but that's for that's for multiple cameras and. Um, I, I just use a manual remote for all my uh, crash cams and remote rigs. So, yeah. And back to the auto. Well, there you go. Auto. The camera automatically chooses between electronic front curtain and mechanical shutters according to shooting conditions. That's great if you want to use auto. Again, I'm a manual guy. Um, you know, if you want to shoot silent, you have to be on uh, electronic shutter. But for some instances, you can get some banding and you want to use the mechanical shutter. So that eliminates any issue there. So happy days, really. Extended shutter speeds. I've obviously got that set off. But it extends the range of shutter speeds available in mode M, which is manual, decreasing the minimum speed from 30 seconds to 900 seconds so that's for, um, I, I believe, the Astro people. Now, I don't shoot any Astro, but I've had lots of people threaten to take me out, and I really want to do it, especially with my mate Will Eads. Um, looking forward to doing that and just doing some good night, you know, some star trails and lightning and things like that. Limit selectable area. Now, I don't bother about uh, the square or the 16.9, although the 16.9 is the closest to um, a film camera. And sometimes it's really great because it's like, you know, you might have some gear in it and instead of just cropping it later, you can just do it in camera. But mainly I only shoot FX and DX. Um, so you can take DX off. You obviously can't take FX off because it's a full frame sensor. And if you took that away, then you wouldn't have an image. <laughs> file number sequence, I've got that set on. And choose how the camera assigns file numbers when a new memory card is inserted or another folder selected. On, file numbering continues from the last number used. Off, file numbering starts over from the highest number in the current folder. Numbering starts from 0001 if the current folder is empty. So it's really helpful if you know what you're doing with that. I don't, so I just let it go for it. <laughs> um, and I change all the file names later anyway and the numbers. I have to renumber everything for work. The view mode, um, live view, that shows the effects of the settings. Now, that means that you're going to see the exposure in live time. If you have it set to this one, it's for ease of viewing. So if it's like low light, um, it will brighten up the screen so or the EVF so that you can see what's going on around it. So, you know, you're not like super dark, especially if, you know, you've got something like lightning or, you know, pulsing lights, whatever. You can see in between those points. For many cameras, and I haven't tested it out on the ZF, but it actually helps focus as well. Now, I'm not saying that it does on this one and uh, or the Z8 or the Z9. But in the past, it has done. Um, Starlight view. Now, this is um, this is pretty good, actually. And it, the Starlight obviously has only started with the Z9. But, um, you know, we had the other options before where, you know, 
it would brighten up the screen the same as the this mode up here the, the uh, view mode the adjust for ease of viewing that one there now warm display colors i've got that off but that also is helpful in super low light especially for those people out there that are shooting stars and that you know you can see what is where in the dark now view all in continuous mode now i have that especially for action so if you have that turned off that means that the uh, screen will go blank it will go black now if you have it turned on it will look like a bit of a shutter which is this next one here the release timing indicator now the release timing indicator i actually always have all my cameras set to a and people laugh saying oh that's just stupid and there was a famous youtuber that laughed at me when I mentioned that it's actually a really good option, it's like, why would I want to do that? Because I don't see it. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because it doesn't completely black it out. It just goes a little bit darker. And um, it's honestly the best way to see that you're shooting a frame in silent mode. Uh, I use it all the time. You know, type B is the edges show up. So then, you you know, you're not looking at the subject, are you? You want to be looking at the subject. You don't want to be looking at the edges to see if everything's going right. And type C is the same, but uh, just left and right. So type A, give it a crack. Um, you can turn it off. I don't see the point in that. I want to know when I'm shooting a frame because I've got so much other things going on in my head. I don't want to have to think of anything else but getting the shot. Right, so you've got the image frame. I have that set to on. Grid type, 3x3. Three three. We'll take them through here by 4x4, 5x4. One to one and 16 by nine um I, I do love a grid and i love a central grid so that is why i have it set to uh three by three virtual horizon now the virtual horizon i use all the time and it really helps me feel that i'm balanced as well not just the camera i know it's weird but it's it's kind of cool so this is the one i use type a and type B is uh, Roland Yaw, is it? I think it is. But type A, it's just got a vertical line through the middle. And once it lines up, um, it goes green. So uh, at the moment, it won't go green because it's a bit of a Dutch tilt there. But yes, so type A for me. Type B, I can see, is very, very helpful if you need even more accuracy. But uh, for me, this is all I need. Right, custom monitor shooting and customer viewfinder shooting display. They're both basically the same things. Some have different than um, different displays than others. This is set on everything because I wanted to know what it had. And there's a lot of information going on there. But normally, I will have it set to number four for no information or um, number two for limited amounts of info. And then same through the viewfinder that has less options. But, um, you know, this is number two I, I use a lot. And number four, obviously, I do as well, um, just so that I can see the whole frame and I know what's going on. Nothing is there to confuse me. Now, flash sync speed. The bracketing and the flash, I don't use any of these. You guys, I'm sure, do. So make sure you dive in a little bit deeper for these auto flash iso sensitivity control um you know there's so many options and there's not you're going to be like me you're not going to use everything i can tell you now um i'm going to turn the modeling flash off actually no i'll put it back on for when i do use it but everyone's camera's set up different you know and we have different uses you know, I'm mainly, I'm, I'm not very technologically minded, to tell you the truth. And I just get a camera to do what I want it to do. And a lot of the things, I don't even know what they do. And I learn more doing these videos for everyone out there than any other time. So, you know, I, I've learned a fair few things tonight already. So that's an epic option. Like I said, you know, I had a strobe where it wasn't going off and it was a matter of turning the flash on. It was flash was off. Let's go into controls because the controls, these are really, really helpful. Now, this one, especially the customized eye menu. Now, see all these different little babies up here and down below. 
you can set them for a quick dive into the menu. So you don't have to go back into the uh, the menu system and if you're new to Nikon, you know, find your way around. Here you have 12 little squares that give you everything that you want. Now I'm going to take you to my actual eye menu. Now the eye menu, this is one of the best customized options that you're going to get in any camera. It is so good. Now I won't use set picture control from here, but you might. But if you want to change it to something else, you can do. So you can go all these different options, skin softening even, portrait impression, balance, metering, flash mode, focus modes, um, you know, HDR overlay. You've got all these things which can be at a fingertip. Now, I would probably set that to silent mode to tell you the truth. So then I can, you know, be on a film set and if I need to go to mechanical shutter, I can turn that off. And, you know, white balance, like I said before, choosing a white balance is really important. I'll take you into the eye menu and show you a couple of the options there. You know, the quality, the size, the autofocus mode and the subject detection, the AF and, um, you know, single and manual focus, the uh, memory card info, metering, custom controls. Now, this is a really good one to have in there too because it, you will be surprised how often you change things, um, especially things like turning off the focus ring on a lens. Now, I know so many people, that go, my photos are all out of focus. It's like, did you have your focus ring active? And they're like, yeah. It's like, okay, turn it off. And you can do that really simply in here. Also, good to turn off the aperture ring as well because you move that and it changes your exposure. So that's why I'm saying, you know, turn a lot of things off and only turn them on when you need to. You know, the focus rings, that's perfect when you are doing manual focus, obviously. Uh, you need that on. And the aperture is great too when you want to adjust the aperture um, when it's changing light. If, say, if you're inside and you're doing video and you're walking outside and then you want to change it just with a little, a little feather, so to speak, and um, vibration reduction. And then there's the release modes. Let's have a look at the eye menu over here. Now, let's just go to area mode. So you've got your modes up the top here, right? So let's say we go to wide, large. And then down here, you press the cursor down. And you can go to auto, uh, human detect, cat detect, vehicle detect, airplane detect, and off. Again, remember, off is an option, a really good option. So, you know, you go through here, you know, AFS, autofocus single, autofocus continuous, manual focus. Um, so many more options available in here. Aeroplane mode, who doesn't want to be able to do that? Uh, it saves your battery power. Remember that. Lots of things to turn off, not just on. Don't forget that. So, yeah, there you go. Lots and lots of options in the uh, customize eye menu. Now, customize controls. Now, this is what I said to put in the eye menu. See, you've got all these different buttons which you can program to all sorts of stuff. Now, this is what I'm saying about the um, the focus rings and stuff like that you can turn on, but you can set it for all sorts of stuff. It just blows me away. There's barely anything that you can't change to customize your camera to you. And like, you know, I change the playback button on my Z9 and Z8 to the front of my camera so I can get to it really easy. Like I've got my finger on the trigger and then my second finger runs through the three options on the Z9 and uh, I can choose playback on the top. The middle one is to toggle between DX and FX, and the bottom one is to activate my virtual horizon. On this camera, I've got the bottom one set to the virtual horizon. So there you go. Lots of different, lots of different everything. But you can even change the direction of where you focus and, you know, things like that, and the aperture as well, you know, if you came over from another camera system. Custom controls, so custom controls, playback, same thing. Got all these different options for your playbacks. 
delve deep into these because they're uh, you know it really is amazing now the touch function i've got that uh, set to off but um you know i'll probably keep it on to on really touch function area you know wide and tall um i'm using it now actually but uh, there's so much in this camera it's just a nikon pedigree with a nod back four decades i'm telling you it's absolutely incredible focus point lock you can do that that's really handy if you don't want to bump it um reverse dial rotation that's what i was saying you can change the um the exposure compensation and shutter speed and aperture and you know just whatever you need to to do you can bring the front wheel to the back and the back wheel to the front so to speak um so you can you know traditionally apertures on the front and shutter speeds on the back but you know in my old camera blimp days i'd change it around uh, so it would just be shutter because i'd shoot the same aperture the whole time release button to use dial this option governs how settings that require holding down a button and rotating a command dial are made by selecting yes adjustments can be made to settings by rotating the command dial after the button is released this state ends when the button is pressed a second time if shutter release button is pressed or the standby timer expires now that can trick you out a couple of times i know it has me i was like oh my gosh how do i turn this off but you just got to remember where you put stuff and you know you'll be fine uh, reverse indicators exactly what i was saying before you can change from plus to minus and and minus to plus again everything reverse ring for focus i have that switched off so i don't make that mistake don't want to be caught there control ring response that's the same thing as in the speed you can set it to um you know high or low i have it set to high but there's lots and lots of reasons why you want to have it set to low just so that it doesn't look all clunky you can actually do it a little bit slower now here's another power zoom that, that only came out and what was it firmware 3 for the z9 and here it is in the zf pretty amazing like really amazing and then you got the speed for it as well again that you can do a crash zoom or a slow creep slow creeps really good for video that would be uh you know what i would say but if you're going for effects well then you're going to go for a super fast speed right so go up to five but otherwise slower is going to be it's going to take a while it's a bit of a dampener so let's put that back into zero full frame playback flicks if you flick it up it'll give you all these options that you can do for an image if you, so if you're looking at an image and you want to give it a star rating you give a flick up and you know you can set it to five stars or you know maybe you want to go a flick up five stars and a flick down one star you know whatever kind of works so good so good this is a really good option actually um flick down same thing exactly what i said before flick in the advanced direction so you know left and right or right and left or, you know whatever it's going to do um when you're having a look at your images so um whatever you know you might be a lefty or righty whatever options there no discrimination in the nikon menu system for left-handed and right-handed people that's the truth um now we're into video same functions there i don't use video very much but you've got many of the same options and we've just talked through most of them oh and zebra pattern too i did not know that it had that so that's for your exposure you know so that you can see where the highlights are and so good you can set the thresholds and the mid-tone range absolutely brilliant makes me want to shoot video there you go you got the you know highlights mid-tones no restrictions grid type same same brightness information display custom viewfinder shooting display same as what we had on the stills options and uh, red record frame indicator i have that on because i want to know that i'm shooting i don't want to sit there and go oh am i rolling or not so turn that on because it uh puts a big red display around shows you the frame and there's no doubts that you have pressed the button and that you are rolling so that's it for the custom settings menu
Right. Let's go down to playback menu. Um, you know, you can delete. Uh, I haven't got a card in here, so it's not going to show that up at the moment. Playback folder, I've got to set to all. Playback display options. Um, you can set so it shows where your focus point is. The first shot in a series, if you've done a burst, um, you can even set it so that it'll go to the first or the last, which is pretty cool. Additional photo information, exposure, highlights. So each one of these that you press, see I've got none because I love that none. Um, each one of these that you press will come up when you play back. And sometimes you just don't want it cluttered. You just want to be able to see nothing there at all. Delete pictures or images from both slots. Now, if you're doing a backup, I'd have that set to no. I definitely wouldn't have it set to yes because you, don't, you do not want to delete your backup. Even if you think that it's a very average image, you might surprise yourself when you have a look at it later. So I would definitely have... Uh, this to set to no so that it doesn't delete from both slots um, so that you have a true backup and that's what I would call that so there we go we've got dual format recording uh, filtered playback criteria if you want to only show protected images or image types or ratings uh, you can choose all these so that it'll only show those images so you're not scrolling through 5,000 frames which I have a tendency of shooting. Series playback, this is what I was talking about before. Auto series playback, list series is single thumbnails. I have them switched to off. Uh, I do find it a little bit confusing because I know in my head uh, the system that I've had for many, many years, but it's actually, it's actually very, very helpful. Um, the series playback is great. Uh, picture review, I have that set to off. I don't want the, the image to come up automatically. I want to tell the camera when I want to see it. Now, after delete, I have it uh, go to the show next, um, but you can um, set to continue as before. Continue as before is probably a good option too, and show previous. I'm not sure that's for me, but, you know. Now, after burst, show the first picture in the burst. This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, when you're shooting, you know, like you might have shot. 30 frames or 60 frames, whatever. So last picture in the burst or first picture in the burst, I would go and stay with last picture in the burst. So then I'm ready to rock for the next one and I like to go backwards actually with photos. I know it sounds weird. Auto-rotate images. Um, I don't have that set to on because I would rather turn my camera sideways and have a look at the image as large as I possibly can. Now, copy images, that is actually really helpful. I've done that quite a lot, copied images to a card and then, um, you know, given that card to someone else uh, for them to, to be able to take those images if I didn't want them to have every image that was actually on my card. So, you know, especially on a film set, if art department's there and I can go and highlight those images that they wanted, copy it, put on their own personal card and away they go. I don't have to worry about it. Now, the setup menu, language. That's obvious. Time zone and date, I haven't set it on this yet, but do so because I'm an idiot. I didn't <laughs> hit the hockey, and so every single frame had the same date and the same time. And what was it? 1st of January 2023, I think it was. So I wasn't able to go back through um, the images and and find what I wanted to find, so to speak. So, yeah, definitely set it. Now, monitor brightness, I set these manually, and what I mainly do is I set one or two down because there's nothing worse. If you set it too bright, you can't retrieve it, right? So the the file will be very underexposed. So you actually want to set it so that you're a little bit, should I say, a little bit brighter. I wouldn't say overexposed. It is what it's doing, but just a little bit brighter. It's easier to pull it back than to push it up, in my opinion. Um, monitor color balance. Uh, I don't really worry about color balance all that much when it comes to monitors. Yeah, I'm not a stickler for it. I don't really care about color. I care about the image and the image only and the focus. A lot of people that want to get it exactly right, but it's not something that I do. 
Uh, the viewfinder, as you see there, I've got that set to minus one for the same reason as the monitor brightness. Finder display size, I've got it set to standard. Um, you can set it to small, but standard, you know, I find that's um, that's that's the ticket really. Right, auto rotate info display. I have that turned off. Um, turning it on isn't such a bad idea because when you turn the camera into portrait mode, it will then put the information down below instead of you trying to, you know, see it on the side. So that's something that I would leave on. Now, the AF fine tuning options, I know lots of people that do this. I've got to go in and explore this a little bit more because I think that it's a, it's a really good option for just tweaking it for your eye or for your personal camera. I think that all cameras are a little bit different in, in some respects. So give that a try. I'm definitely going to give it a go. Again, leave some comments down below if you get this far and let me know what you think. Now, the non-CPU lens data, that is for the old school F-mount lenses that you can set them up and all the information's in there. So, you know, you can put in 105 F2 and it will come up with all that information for you. Save focus position, that is off. But again, it's not a bad idea to have. Now, save zoom position. Choose whether the camera saves the zoom position for attached power zoom lenses when turned off and restores it when next turned on. That's a pretty good idea, actually. So it keeps the focal length where it was when you turned it off. That's um, actually really kind of cool. Auto temperature cutout. I've set it to standard. You can set it to high push limits. I've never had a camera overheat, but it's obviously there for a reason. So, you know, whatever works for you. Image sensor clean. Now, the sensors on the Nikons, they have a coating on it, which are dust repellent. So they're amazing to the point that I was using my Z9 for oh well over a year and a half before I got a sensor clean. And there was no dust on it. There was like one little dust bunny, I should say. And I could not believe it. And then it was the guys at um I think it was Adrian or Danny at Nikon took me through it all and I was just absolutely dumbfounded that you can get a coating to stop the dust from going on. I mean, I think back to my Mad Max days. Oh, my poor little sensor was so dusty with the, uh, with the, what was I shooting then? D4, I guess, or D, yeah, probably D4 or D3, maybe D4. Anyway, I used to have to clean it every week and I ended up scratching the sensor because of all the micro dust, all the, it was just terrible. Um, you can do an image dust off reference photo so that it knows where little dust bunnies are and it can fix them up. And a pixel mapping for, you know, hot pixels and repairing that sort of stuff. I've never had any of that issue before, actually. Now, image comment and, and copyright information, I always have them set to on. Uh, they're not here on this camera because it's not completely set up. But I just use either my email address or my Instagram handle. So at Jason Boland or Jason Boland at blah, blah, blah. So there you go. IPTC, voice memo options, camera sounds. You know, that's for your little beeping for focus and things like that. Silent mode. I have it turned off. But uh, on a set, obviously, I have it turned on. Touch controls I have turned on. but but you can get a little trick there by pressing the back of the screen when you didn't want to. So you can, depending on what it is, you know, turn it on or off. Self-portrait mode. Why don't I have that on my Z9? Setting the monitor to self-portrait position puts the camera in self-portrait mode. In self-portrait mode, all buttons other than the shutter release and video record buttons are disabled. Huh. That's pretty cool. There's nothing that isn't thought of. Oh, my gosh. HDMI, obviously, for playing back and plugging into computers and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you've got all battery info. I love the battery info. 72%. Huh? Number shot zero. So what have I been going through the menu for an hour and 17 minutes? And it wasn't a fully charged battery. So it's done pretty good, actually. US power delivery on, yes. Um, energy saving photo mode, turn that on. 
Slot empty release lock. Yes, yes, yes. Keep it locked. You do not want to enable release because if you have it on this one here, enable release, if you don't have a card in it, it will still pretend it's taking photos. or Well, it won't be making images because it's not. It'll just be tricking you. So if you have it set to lock, then if you don't have a card in, you cannot take photographs. You cannot make images. It will just, nothing will happen. So this is a really, that's a really, really, really important thing to do. Set that to lock. Save and load menu settings. So, you know, that saves to a card and then fill them in again later. Reset all settings. Firmware version, version one. And what else we got? We've got the network. Now I don't use the network, but um, I'll take you through here so you can see the options. And uh, oh, I've got Atmos. No way. There is so much in this camera. It really, really blows me away. And then the My Menu. So we are done like a dinner. And um, I didn't think it was going to take that long, but there is so much to this camera. It's absolutely amazing. Now, if you're looking at the back of the camera, it's got playback, delete, auto exposure, and, and AF lock. It's got a rear wheel for either shutter or aperture, whatever you want to set it to. The eye menu, which I thoroughly recommend. Then there's the cursor that you can use with the OK button in the middle. And then the zoom control plus or minus, um, display button, and the menu mode. And there is also on the side at the top, the flick between the monitor and the EVF. And then we come up to the top of the camera and going from left to right, you've got a little slider for auto, program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual, which mine is always set on. Then you've got another wheel. Now, the, the body is made out of magnesium, and the dials are all brass. And it's got it's quite a, a really good weight to this camera. It will absolutely blow you away when you pick it up. It's like there's no mistaking it for any other camera. And it feels closer to my old Nikomats than anything else, to be honest, but looks more like an EL or an FM2. Now, the first big dial that is ISO, and at the moment it's set on 6400 ISO, but you can hear it there. Listen to this. That is just beautiful. Oh, my glorious. And... Anyway, you have to press the button in the middle to turn it, and then you can lock it off as well so um, you're not moving it. But then to change it, you just press the button in the middle, and then it will move around. And on the other side, you have the shutter speeds. I have it set to a third stop because I like to use the front and rear wheels because I like to have a few modern luxuries on my pro retro camera uh, but same thing you press the middle dial and then that unlocks it and then you can um, go through the shutter speeds you know they are in full stops so 15th eighth fourth half and one second two second four second bulb and flash but yeah back around to third stops for me then you have the on off button and you have the auto exposure compensation over on the right hand side and then underneath the shutter dial you have click it over to video click it over to stills and then into black and white mode all right happy days